let's go to Ben Shapiro. And and we need we need somebody to give this, you know, the the the, the scientific, intellectual, economic once over it deserves. This was called Shapiro breaks down Biden's very important Biden's Joe Biden's supply chain crisis. And I'm certain it will recognize the uh, uh, like over-reliance on spread out globalized supply chains and how one area in them can collapse and it can screw up the whole thing and how Joe Biden's been in office for eight months and this has been a problem that corporations have been building since the 90s, basically since the opening of, uh, of China in a lot of ways and, in major, and Russia as well. Um, and sort of the Eastern European bloc, they just kind of pegged out like where your whatever your phone or your computer or whatever is made in 17 different places. And if one of them falls apart, they all fall apart. But I'm sure, um, I, I'm, I trust Ben will explain this in his best porky pig voice. That you are seeing price increases is not just the monetary phenomenon that has been created by the Federal Reserve over the course of the last two years and the Joe Biden plan to spend Sorry, more who was president the last two years? The monetary policy by the, uh, the Federal Reserve did this over the last two years. They created inflation. The, apparently, uh, uh, Ben is skipping right past the Wuhan lab leak theory and going straight to the Federal Reserve created COVID. I guess that's the, oh, I probably should... I don't want to get in too much trouble. Hold on one second. Let me grab this guy over here. Um, just in case, like, restating that. There you go. What? Um, just to let everybody know. God has ever seen. But also... So, the sorry, the, the whom? And the Joe Biden plan to spend more money than God has ever seen. But um, There is nothing that God has not seen, nor can he see. And his imagination is, of course, one with his... Uh, our existence. So there is, I mean, I appreciate the cute remark, but when you're orthodox, I mean, you should really check your words on, on that kind of stuff. Also, the problem with the ports, right? So we have the shipping bottleneck. Uh, by the way, um, spending more money than God has ever seen. The maximum expenditure that, that Biden ran on was 11 trillion over 10 years, a little over a trillion plus a year added to the potential spending. It's down to five. But let's be abundantly clear. Our economy is 28 to, tw to 30 trillion a year in general, as far as the whole God has ever seen thing. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly is happening with the shipping bottlenecks and why we have these shipping bottlenecks. So Dominic Pino. Well, it's probably because uh, socialism and, uh, and, and Joe Biden uh, likes ice cream too much. The Rights for National Review had a good piece in late September talking about this. He says, first, shipping is a global industry, but this crisis is largely an American problem. According <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. This crisis is largely an American problem. Oh, hey, a chart on uh, dis disruptions in supply chains. And, and sorry, the light blue line is America. The big blue line, that's Europe. Ducked way down. Went below China for a while. Good on them. And then came back up and are evening out. Of course, it's, yeah, what, 30 countries they're bleeding that off of? The Eurozone. There we go. Our, we've had some disruptions right here. This is us. Obviously, China and emerging markets aren't because nothing leaves. But there you go. Largely a, a U.S. problem. 2020 World Bank HIS market container port performance index, for example, not one U.S. port ranked in the top 50 global ports in terms of getting a ship in and out of port, according to Scott Lincecum, who writes for the Dispatch. And I'm sorry, what year was that? Oh, 2020. Right. Sorry. And the title of this video, Shapiro breaks down Biden's supply chain crisis. Good. Okay. This ranked at U.S. ports statistically was Philadelphia at 83, with Virginia close behind at 85, and New York, New Jersey at 89. Oakland ranks 332nd. LA, Long Beach, ranked a dismal 328 and 333, respectively. So why are our ports so far behind? Not because- um, I, I know why. I got, I got, um, we haven't spent uh, nearly enough money on developing our infrastructure, including funds for ports. 
No, that's not where you're gonna go. Um, is it? It's probably AOC. Probably did it. Spend on infrastructure, as the Biden administration would have you believe. Mm -hmm. The federal government could spend a quadrillion dollars on ports. It wouldn't change the contracts with. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you could. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you spent a quadrillion dollars on the ports, I'm guessing it would shake a little shit loose. I mean, if you spent a quadrillion, I mean, I don't know how. Is that a? That's uh. 400 trillion trillion, right? Um, so, a quadri yeah, so, yeah, something like that. So I'm guessing, or 250 trillion trillion. Uh, but either way, if you spent that, you probably have robots uh, already. You know, the Boston Dynamics contract alone would be worth $70 trillion. And they have like robot dogs unloading all the containers. Shoreman unions that prevent ports from operating 24-7. See, it's unions problem. It's the stupid workers who don't want their hands smashed, don't want to work their themselves into an early grave, want enough equipment so that the stuff comes off, and they get they get these shipping containers that are unbalanced, that aren't properly packed, and then they open them up and they dump them. Why won't they just lose a dock worker once a week? It's the unions that do it. It's not the hiring to match how much is going on there. No. Asia and send labor costs through the roof. According to Scott Lincecum. Yeah, there are no unions. In China, they just, if you don't work fast enough, they just throw you into the ocean. Dock workers on the West Coast are making an average, an average dock workers, okay, of $171,000 a year plus. Uh-huh, because most of them are operating heavy machinery. They're not, they're not like longshoremen or some shit, but never mind, like. Healthcare. Pretty sweet gig. And when you sign a crappy union contract on behalf of the Port of Los Angeles, which is a government agency, when you do that sort of thing, mm -hmm. what you end up doing is incentivizing... By the way, uh, did Joe Biden, just for the record, Ben, did Joe Biden give all the dock workers a $100,000 raise when he came into office? He is including benefits. Um, because, I mean, again, let's go on. This is I didn't post this video. I didn't cut it. I, this is 10 minutes and 23 seconds of the best Ben Shapiro take on supply chain problems. Supply chain problems. Not shipping problems. Not port of entry problems. Which, by the way, they've already jacked up to 24-7 and have, are working with FedEx and other companies to work around the clock to get those things out of the ports and on where they're going because that's part of the backup too. Thanks, Louis DeJoy. That said, um, this video is called Shapiro Breaks Down Biden's Supply Chain Crisis. And, the, and so far, he's broken it down is that the ports don't work very well. They've never worked very well and because people get paid too much to work down at the docks. And it's been going on for years. And he's using uh, uh, like data, whatever, this dude's opinion on the quality of our ports from the last year of the Trump administration. It turns out that rich union contracts, just like everywhere else in the American economy, tend to stagnate whoever the employer is and make it less effective. Uh, no, because they were there. We haven't had jam ups at any other time. We have a backup because of COVID. That's it. If he was making this argument and there was this kind of a jam up. And we hadn't just been through a pandemic. We're still choking through it. There were still outbreaks of it in the countries where we get this stuff from. If there weren't issues with, um, you know, COVID tests and all this kind of stuff for people on the boats themselves, the shipping itself, like uh, suppliers and producers and laborers and, and factories shutting down because of the disease and all that kind of stuff, backing up production and desire, an overwhelming amount of buying online from this market. And by the way, the, one of the reasons why it's bigger over here is because we have more money and we are buying more things than other countries. So that stuff is shipping in and it's not getting in fast enough. Beyond the stuff that's not on the shelves. They were prioritizing the stuff that was already sold. And even still, you got a problem. The ships are backed up. The administration is taking steps to solve it like adults. All the folks on the left who are big into unions. Ah, uh, unions are the bulwark of the middle class. Well, it turns out the union contracts are very good for the people who are members of the union and have jobs. And for everyone else, 
there are serious externalities, and the ports are one of those casualties. Yeah, yeah, these, these ports just don't work the rest of the time. In non-pandemic years, where this has been going on for a long time, hard work down the... And by the way, Ben Shapiro's one trip to Home Depot where he bought a plank of wood and put it in a bag is his idea of physical labor. Again, if this was the case, if there's this huge backup that Biden became president, you know, in if he had taken the job over from George Bush to W, if he'd have taken it over in 2004, 2005, and we didn't have all these issues, and then suddenly the ports were all backed up because Biden was pushing this union thing, and they all went on strike because they decided they needed more stuff, and there were ships out there, and then inflation hit because it went on and on and on. You might have a point, but that's not at all what the occurrence is. This is all based on a bottleneck of stuff that couldn't be made, couldn't be shipped, wasn't available, suddenly making it back, and and then there's a bottleneck because the ports don't normally handle all the ships at once after half the ships for months. The unions have been fighting automation in American ports for a long time because they're afraid that they're simply going to be replaced by machines. Also, according to this columnist for... By the way, um, there is no chance that Ben Shapiro will be replaced by automation ever because he already has. Review Dominic Pino. I mean, honestly, does that sound like a human voice to you? You imagine, uh, you know, it has to be a machine. There's very little vocal inflection. It's the same thing. It's very staccato. I, I mean, it has all the personality of, if you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try, like, try again. Pandemic is not the primary cause of the crisis. The pandemic merely immunitized a crisis that was long brewing. My well, you're brewing something. You leave it on the stove. It overflows. Uh, it wasn't a problem until you stopped paying attention to it and it overflowed. You were mitigating it. You were turning the pe temperature down. It was starting to go up a little and you fix that and you go back, you know, then, but no, this is, it's a problem that was brewing forever. So again, a, this just, the pandemic's not to blame. This is a problem that's been around for a long time. Hence, Shapiro breaks down Biden's supply chain crisis. Rename your video dickhead. The current mess in the United States was decades in the making, reflecting systemic yes. decades in the making. Clearly, and that's, you know, except for the four years Trump was president. Let's let's be abundantly clear. During the four years Trump, there was like a pause in it getting worse until, of course, you know, runaway pandemic, which has nothing to do with this. Nothing at all. Britain trade policies that decrease the efficiency and flexibility U.S. ports and the economy reliant on them enjoy in the best of times and desperately need in the worst. The problems we are enduring now will not be solved by a pandemic emergency stopgap measure. They require real changes to the way the industry works that will be difficult. Again, what, is the, what the hell does this have to do with Joe Biden's current policies other than the fact that he's pro-union and the idea is that, oh, now we can blame the dock workers union for being overwhelmed on Joe Biden. Design and implement and will encounter heavy resistance from interest groups that, be that benefit from the status quo. Okay, so we've got real systemic problems in the shipping industry that are brought about by really bad trade policy and really bad union policy. I'm sorry, what trade policy would that be? What's the current uh, Biden trade policy that you think is exacerbating the uh, backup at the Western ports? And all of this is not fixable by Joe Biden saying words. See, the, the way that shipping works. Is oh, okay, guys, get out a pen. Shit, I don't have a, hold on. something to write on i'll just i'll just write it in the air it'll be easier that way okay so the guys i don't know how shipping works you don't know how shipping works but you're about to find out i wrote back in june is is pretty complex yes uh yeah are you gonna are you gonna talk us to us about like weight displacement and water or uh hold on wait 
Yes, Joe Biden's supposed to cast the spell. Ipsilum calorum shippinus maximus patum. You shut up, man. All right. <laughs> Let's see. This is not fixable by Joe Biden saying words. See, the, the way that shipping works. By the way, citation needed. As Cite Pino wrote back in June. Uh huh. Is, is pretty complex. Pretty complex. Okay. And he points out that the global shipping industry uh -huh. is still behind from the pandemic and likely will be for quite some time. That is because why would it, still behind from from the pan from the pandemic and still be what because shipping is complex. So there there have been canceled canceled sailings and ships only like to ship when canceled, they are. There's been canceled sailings. Yes, the Mackinac race in Lake Michigan has been canceled. Um, the, uh, you know, what's the big, uh, yes, a lot of sailings have been canceled. <laughs> this is, Ben, you're not pining for the transatlantic slave trade, trade again, are you? Wait, hold on. There have been canceled, canceled sailings. And ships only like to ship when they are, uh, the, the owners of the ships only like to ship when the ship is completely full because it takes like three weeks to send a ship from Asia to Los Angeles. It's not like a plane. It's not like a plane? Are you sure? Not, shipping is complex <laughs> because it's not like a plane, okay? And they don't like to sail unless it's full. Hmm. Does it, well, I don't like to sail. Unless it's define full like a plane. I see. All right. <laughs> if you have a cargo ship sitting in LA that's scheduled for Shanghai and the shipping line decides to cancel the sailing, that stinks for both the people trying to ship things out of LA and for people trying to receive things in Shanghai. Especially but if it's, yeah, and by the way, welcome to almost never happens. This is, this is, Think about this for a second, folks. Listen to the analogy this asshole just made and see if you can explain to me what is wrong about what he is saying. If you have a cargo ship sitting in L.A. that's scheduled for Shanghai. A, a cargo ship sitting in L.A. Obviously, he means at the port, not, you know, like, you know, the corner of 3rd and like La Cienega and La Brea or anything like that. Okay, you have a cargo ship. Uh, sitting in Los Angeles, where it's going, where ship Go from Asia to Los Angeles is not like a plane. Uh huh. If you have a cargo ship sitting in LA that's scheduled for Shanghai, and Sched the ship uh, sorry, a cargo ship in LA that is scheduled for Shanghai. Okay, so it's going with goods from America to China. Remember, we're talking about supply chain problems. This is uh, that's affecting America. Okay, and? Decides to cancel the sailing. That stinks for both the people trying to ship things out of LA and for people trying to receive things in Shanghai. It stinks for the people in LA trying to ship things out and for the people in Shanghai waiting to receive things. Um, it, yeah, it's full, full of beef, corn, and soybeans left over. Um, supply chain. Um, your shelves are empty. There's not enough stuff. The food is too expensive. Things are not available in the United States. And the example that that's causing inflation and, of course, a backup at the ports that is issue, creating issues. Ben apparently thinks that the problem is goods from America are not getting to shelves in Shanghai. Do you see the kind the, um... <laughs> Way to handle it. I mean, talk about being a contrarian. Well done, lad. This is, this is impressive. I, I mean, almost out of the gate. Bob 
eggs. I have to say. Five eggs in a month. I don't know. Eat two eggs a day. And yet. Five eggs. Will not get to Shanghai. We are supposed to be sending our eggs to Shanghai. Five eggs. And they are not getting five there. Five eggs. Jesus Christ. This is your. This is. We're, we're three minutes into his video. And this is Ben Shapiro making his case about. About. And maybe he brings it out. We'll give him the benefit of the dumb. Um, right here, Shapiro breaks down Biden's supply chain crisis, and crisis is in all caps. What the shite is how in the did have shite? Um, Explain yourself. All right. Maybe he brings it out. Maybe he goes, I, I meant to say goods from Shanghai are not getting to the United States. And therefore, the cost of those goods are more expensive here or the ships aren't getting here so that stuff isn't available. I, I had no idea that we were the factory of the world for uh, for China. But it also stinks for people trying to ship things out of Shanghai because the people running the Shanghai port were planning on using that same boat. Yeah, they're planning on it being in Shanghai in three weeks. Yeah. Where's where's our boat? Well, he didn't want it. He's, he's in L.A. Why don't you bring it back over here? Well, he's waiting for it to be full. Wait a second. So our boat, which left China full because of the trade deficit, gets to America and doesn't fill up with American goods coming to China. <laughs> and they're waiting till it's full. I mean, do you have a year? Well, be there. So you got three weeks worth of containers that pile up on the docks at Shanghai. So you might think they can wait for the next one, but every boat is scheduled to be full. So you end up with these giant backlogs. So. It, it, so it's not that so many goods are coming into these ports at once. Because we need more ports, by the way. And if you want to lower um, how much people are getting paid at these ports, one of the things where infrastructure could solve this is another gigantic port. I'm, sh I'm certain that there are West Coast cities that would love the federal government to invest in a giant shipping dock um, to bring in you know, foreign goods on either coast. But that's infrastructure spending, and that's not how you solve this. You solve this by making sure enough of American, all those Teddy Ruxpins that Americans are making, and all those transistor radios, and and all, this giant shipment of Yankee candles is getting all to Shanghai. Is a, is a serious problem. You have a serious shortage of longshoremen in the United States. There aren't enough workers to. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just funny. Them. And also import volume wait, from China. The ocean ship. Wait, back up. I, I have to. <laughs> All of this is a, is a serious problem. You have a serious shortage of longshoremen in the United States. That's terrible. When that happens, when you have a shortage of longshoremen, I mean, <laughs> this is terrible. Obviously, Biden caused this. We have a shortage of longshoremen. I'm a stock wise. If, I don't really invest much, but. I'm going long on short, on, on, on short men. There aren't enough workers to unload them. And also import volume from China. No, no, there is it, that. It isn't that there aren't enough workers. It's that there's so much shit. And, and the people that are there that normally unload exactly what they've been hired to do, the volume of the workers that are normally there are completely overwhelmed by the number of ships showing up now. And so they're going to have to start working, uh, you know, 24 seven. Which, by the way, Biden is working with the ports to make sure that they do. You know, solving a problem that comes up instead of just playing blame game. Just you deal. Five ships got Shanghai, right? Ocean shipping is up 54% year over year. Exports have only ticked up by 4.4%. So a lot of... Con Hold on. Maybe we've just... Ben, perhaps we've stumbled upon your confusion about the directions of the shipping backlog. 
What was this? There aren't enough workers to unload them. Mm -hmm. Which is not true. There's there's not enough space for the boats to actually come in. You can only displace so much water, Ben, because the it's not there's only so many docks, and then you have to take the shit off, and it's like thousands of there's tons of stuff, and then each one of those can snap and everything, and it breaks. And you have to, uh, and then it has to be moved down the dock, and it's all, de you know, half of it's delicate and half of it's fucking concrete that you're just ma mailing just to be dicks. And <laughs> and then you have to move that boat out, which is gigantic, over to another dock and load it up with a thousand containers and send it off. There's not enough workers. There's not enough workers in existence, and that it, it wouldn't matter. They would just be in the way. There's just too much shit coming in. During the normal work cycle. That's what this is. And then, by the way, you're going to have, like, the lighting, like, the moving to, to working 24-7, for example. You're going to have to bring in shifts of people, truckers and other people who have experience working these kind of things that work in other parts of the country. Hire them as temporary workers. Come on down, live in a hotel, work for a few weeks, make some extra coin. You'll make a lot more than you would driving, for example. And then, you you know, you or you work two nights and then you take your truck out. That kind of shit. Like they start coordinating with all these workers all over the country to see if they can fill out this thing. But you're still going to have to light the goddamn thing because you're lifting these giant containers and l putting them down on the dock and then transporting them from the dock to where they'll be shipped out. And then there's got to be enough trucks taking them out. And some of it goes through the mail system. And DeJoy is slowing that down on purpose. But I'm sure he'll attack Louis DeJoy in a second. And also import volume from China. The yeah, ocean shipping is up 54% year over year. Year, okay, 54% from last year, where it cratered. And then, so 54% more ships coming in. Now, Ben, how many ships are going that way? Full. How, what's, well, how much are they up from 2020 when there was fucking nothing happening? What's the number? Here it comes. Do you see it? Check this out. Their exports have only ticked up by 4.4%, so a lot- Oh, so there's 54% more ships coming in from last year, but there's only 4% more ships going out from last year. When, does anybody remember what was happening as far as business last year? Goods being made, factories being open, like- Exports being shipped out, we're up for we're up four percent from that, and this asshole starts his analogy with: "There's a boat in Shanghai waiting, to, you know, in, in L.A. waiting to be filled up with stuff before it goes to Shanghai." Well, keep waiting, stupid. Containers are leaving Asia, but not enough have actually been returning there. And you need. Yeah, you heard that right too. China, the ocean shipping is up 54% year over year. Exports have only ticked up by 4.4%. So a lot of containers are leaving Asia, but not enough have actually been returning there. Ah, now why would that be? A, they still have to be unloaded because you need more workers. B, those containers get put on a truck and taken or on a train or on a truck and then a train and and buzzed out across the country. And they stay with those goods until those goods are removed. And then they make the trip all back and then they go out and they head back over there. China is running out of shipping containers. Not because of us, because of their own factories. They used to make plenty, but now they've got too many. Hold on one second. Um, let's see if I could find this. Yeah. Um, there you go. August 4th. This is a, a like, where did all the shipping containers go? The trading war is seemingly a wash in boxes, but companies say finding available containers is harder than ever. In China? Are they saying this? I'm sorry. Are they saying this in China? The shipping container that has been building block of global trade growth is turning into the latest source of frustration for importers and exporters coping with worldwide supply chain disruption. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was Biden's supply chain crisis. Isn't this Biden's fault? 
I mean, he's an old white Democrat. Everything has to be his fault at this point, right? The steel boxes are harder than ever to find. A surging demand to restock inventories and a series of shipping disruptions, uh, disruptions have left many thousands of containers stranded at sea. Um, by the way, there we go. Thousands of containers stranded at sea on ships anchored near jammed up ports. Not just in the United States, all over the world. All over the world. Everybody's got the wear. ELO, anyone? Okay, here we go. Still more are stacking up at inland uh, freight hubs. Remember when I said they had to go out and then they said the thing after they've been on the truck or on the train? Remember when I just said that? And then I go to the Wall Street Journal, which is supposed to know everything about this kind of stuff. And I'm already, <clears throat> I've already told you what they're going to say. And I haven't read the article. It's just grabbed it. First link. Just saying. Uh, and then freight hubs in the U.S., Europe, and Asia. But, oh, wait. U.S., wait a minute. Europe and Asia as well. Thought this was Biden's. Okay. As companies struggle to cope with the cargo flows that at times have overwhelmed their operations. So these things are sitting at the companies in freight yards, in, in the, you know, at Amazon centers, in giant stacks. I hope Ben listens to Hal talk about his report. There's no way Ben Shapiro is going to see this. Ben, um, if you watch this, for the record, I saw your debate with Anna Kasparian, um, and I congratulate whoever put it on as finding the two biggest, most vapid dunces to talk about important issues and pretend that they don't play ping pong for a living and that the genuine serious um, circumstances, genuine serious, genuinely serious issues aren't the ball that you just got to go knip, knop, knip, knop for a living. You made no sense. It was derivative bullshit. She was babbling. You were like doing talking points. And none of it solved anything. It was a bunch of lip flap. I hope both of you were paid very well. But even beyond this, what you're saying in this segment, Ben. Little Benny PP, Porky Pig voice, Ben. Yes, you do sound like Porky Pig. Especially when you stammer, it's it's uncanny. Congratulations on your new Disney gig. They, they uh, or it's Warner Brothers. <laughs> it's right. Uh, they they probably bought it by now, though. Honestly, don't they own it with Animaniacs or something? Anyways, um, either way, congratulations on the gig. Um, n n nothing you're saying in this makes any goddamn sense. And the fact that you named your video this is fucking embarrassing. This is, I mean, you expect yourself to be some sort of like or present yourself as some sort of intellectual people are expecting some sort of a genuine take they're not coming to you for bonguinos machismo and blood but this is a uh, attitude sales they think your head is full of facts because you speak quickly and in a high-pitched voice i don't know where they get that from but they're certainly not getting it from this video because this is just fucking dumb It's dumb. And your rando attack on the president of the United States in this case, when you were saying people were just, you know, saying orange man bad shit last year and the year before, while you're citing figures from when he was, when Trump was president to make this case about the global supply chain problem. And, and this is, and breaks down why this is Biden's supply chain pro, you know, crisis and crisis in all caps. Aren't you fucking embarrassed? How does this segment not embarrass you? But please tell us how boats float. Shit. You need those containers in order to ship things. Everybody needs those containers in, in order to ship things. But there aren't enough people where, because of COVID, still ravaging areas around, weirdly enough, food processing plants and others because there's a bunch of anti-vaxxers and dickheads who won't just get the shot and move on with their fucking lives. And so they're, they're, they're opening and shutting and opening and shutting. And the people who are in charge of stuff are dying off or you end up with your, you know, your shop steward, uh, or I guess in these places would be non-union. So your manager is in a, on a fucking ventilator. So nobody knows what to do with the containers as the shit inside rots. There are not enough ships. There are not enough containers to move more goods than ever before. Not enough workers to load and unload. No, no, no. Excuse me. 
there are not more goods than ever before. And by the way, um, th- th- it's hard to make the case that Biden is ruin the, ruining the economy if more goods than ever before are coming into the United States. Just, I mean, just why don't you just old yeller your best arguments against Biden um, that you were having some success with? Just take it out behind the barn and shoot it at this point. More good, more goods than ever. Why are there more goods than ever? Because people have money in their pocket and they're not starving and they're not worried about, you know, they're they're getting raises. There are even strikes going on because people feel like they can ask for more money finally. And there'll be negotiations between these. Some of them win, some of them will lose. More goods than ever coming into the country. Boy, that sounds like communism. And that is going to drive up the prices. Excuse you? Those containers in order to ship things. Mm Mm-hmm. So not enough ships, there are not enough containers to move more goods than ever before, not enough workers to load and unload them, mm-hmm. and that is going to drive up the prices. Um, again, there are plenty of workers, they just can't work 24-7 because they're human beings and not robots. Fuck you, on behalf of uh, the shortest long shoreman in existence, wherever he may be. I salute you, sir. Um, but yeah, yeah we, we know this, but it's because of a backlog, not because the ports of America are somehow magically shit all of a sudden. So Joe Biden's silly, silly plan here is that he's going to order the ports to stay open for 24 hours. No, he's not going to order them to stay open for 24 hours. Uh, He's going to order them to, uh, or request, I suppose, but order them to work 24-7 for a period of weeks to deal with the backlog. Now, if you'll recall, there was a similar right-wing talking point around the Del Rio Bridge. There was a campment of Haitians and it was all packed up and it was terrible and it looked, it was squalor and it was full of criminals and dangerous and blah, blah, blah. And it was just, America was being invaded. And then uh, about a week and a half later, the Biden administration uh, processed the families, got rid of the in, the individual dudes, anybody, you know, that they grabbed, particularly they flew them back to Haiti. Other people just decided to make a, you know, take it on the heel and toe and go back into Mexico and they bulldoze the camps, and it's back to normal. They're processing people the best they can. But it's not, there's no encampment. Took about a week and a half. Adult shit. This happened because of COVID and the backup of goods that have been waiting in factories that were half shut. China's got uh, a coal issue right now, so their production's cut in half. There are back orders on everything. Everybody who does have a back order is wanting to race to market because they're trying to break you know, out ahead of the other factories that are selling similar shit by being the one, we can get it there in two weeks. It's going to take them a month and a half. So there's a bum rush to get stuff into the market, period. And there's that extra level of competitiveness. Why this is a silly plan in just one second first. Yeah, well, yeah, hang out. Don't, don't, uh, you still got a lot to explain about the, how boats work. Let us talk about a simple fact. That is that hackers, bad guys, that are decent in crime, right? I mean, this is literally how they make their living. Decent in crime, this is how they make their living. You know, the average Joe hacker criminal person. I hope they're not sinking boats. Is this where we're going? Well... If they can steal you know, property from you, like physical property from you, how about all of those assets that are not material, right? Don't, they don't exist just in a safe at your house. Now, the Social Security Administration computer servers are 45 years old. Computer services at Health and Human Services are 50. Maybe- and, wait a minute. First of all, is he, is he going into a LifeLock ad right here? Cyber criminals hacked U.S. Census Bureau's computers where everything about you is stored. The threat of a cyber thief stealing your credit card, that's actually not your biggest risk on a personal level. The biggest risk is that somebody fakes ownership of your home. It's called home title. Yes, home title lock. Fuck you. Really? The FBI calls you one of bank or mortgage company servers where copy borrow on your home and leave you in debt. You're not going to title lock.com, register lock.com, promo code rate. No. Only Joe Biden's fault. 
Sorry. And drive prices up. Sorry. Okay, here we go. What was that again? This is only Joe Biden's fault? Okay, so the shipping shortages that are happening are not only Joe Biden's fault. Um, excuse me. Yes, they are, Ben. It says right here, Shapiro, that I, I suppose that's you, um, breaks down Biden's supply chain crisis. This is, he owns this. This is him. So I, I don't know who else you're going to blame. They are certainly partly Joe Biden's fault. Certainly because partly. Cer certainly partly. That's how we look at it. Certainly partly. Hi, I'm certainly partly. As it turns out, when you drive prices up through inflation, and when you sign rich union contracts, and when you do all of these things, ignoring the realities on the ground, well, you end up with some bottlenecks. Oh, you mean COVID? Like you've been doing in this entire argument? you end up with some bottlenecks. Here's a good idea. Did we have material bottlenecks in our supply chain, a bill in our, in our ports, in that part of the supply chain before COVID? And if we did, why didn't Trump fix them? When the Republicans had the House and Senate and the, and the presidency for the first couple of years, why didn't they fix it? They could have fixed it, right? They could have made it essential working and they could have, you know, pushed back against union contracts and declared an emergency of trade and blah, 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 or some nonsense, right? You have labor shortages because people are staying home from work. When you tell people not to go back to work, when you... Yeah, that's not the case with ports. People, you'll pay them to stay home. And then you have labor shortages on one end. Bottlenecks in the system tend to pile up. It's sort of like how traffic problems happen. If you ever think, if you ever think about a traffic... Hey, asshat. All of those things you just mentioned are caused by the fact that we just went through a pandemic and we're still going through it in large parts of red America. It's the middle states where those truckers live, where those, those canisters are going missing, where they are getting stuck. And not because those people are refusing to work or they're, you know, they're not, uh, you know, they don't have a good work ethic or anything. A lot of them are just fucking dying. Or they have somebody in the family that's sick. Or the, or their wife gets sick. Or their husband gets sick. And somebody's got to watch the kids because they don't have childcare. And they just take the UI or have extended taking the UI until the absolute tail end of it. Which is ended now. You think like, why, why are the, why are Shapiro the moved to Texas because he likes shitty electrical grids. Jams, why, doesn't, why don't all the cars keep moving? All it takes, studies have shown, is a couple of cars going on an on-ramp a little bit slower than the rest of traffic and the downstream effect. So grandmothers with driver's licenses is why avocados are expensive. Why, doesn't, why don't all the cars keep moving? All it takes, why don't, studies uh, sorry, have shown- I said all the cars, not avocados. I'm sorry, I don't speak Porky Pig. So it's, I need a translator. Is a couple of cars going on an on-ramp mm -hmm. a little bit slower than the rest of traffic uh -huh. and the downstream effects on a crowded freeway are pretty dramatic because people start. Yes, we know. Going up behind and suddenly you have a bottleneck. So no, you don't have a bottleneck. You have a traffic jam. A bottleneck is because there are too many cars for the lanes that are available, not because somebody's slow and oh, okay, look who I'm talking to, Mr. SATs. His plan is that he wants to keep the Los Angeles port open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He pledged that this would relieve pressure on an overworked supply chain it has frustrated Americans and blossomed into a major economic shortcoming. Mm -hmm. There's so, so that's why, that's, to use your analogy, um, you got a traffic jam. Um, it's why in big cities, they change the timing on stoplights, for example, during parts of the day where they have too much traffic in certain areas to encourage some drivers to get a straight shot on a long road so they might not take the freeway to ease up the pressure on the freeways and take surface streets and set and instead. So, you know, adult shit. Problem with this plan. It is not going to do anything. Biden said it's not going to do. It. Okay. Well then why? Uh, yeah, you're right. What, what's your plan kiddo? It's not going to do anything. Let's see. Uh, they're able to do X a number of, uh, shipping containers, get them, uh, onto trucks, onto trains, and out of the port and clear things and get stuff onto the boat going to Shanghai with the $9 worth of stuff that we're selling to China right now. And that'll go out uh, at X number of times currently. So X times three, three eight-hour shifts. 
the announcement had the potential to be a game changer in unclogging the nation's supply lines. So here was Joe Biden trying to blame private companies for the shipping delays as opposed to... He didn't blame anybody. What, what the fuck? Are you, what are you talking? Why blame private companies? You know the bad policy at the ports. What's the bad policy at the ports? Oh, right. They're private companies running them. What the fuck are you talking about? Today's announcement has the potential to be a game changer. Mm -hmm. I say potential because all of these goods won't move by themselves. For the, uh, for the positive impact uh, to be felt all, uh, all across the country and by all of you at home, we need major retailers who ordered the goods and the freight movers who take the goods from the ships to factories and to stores mm -hmm. to step up as well. Uh-huh. Yeah, they do. And I can't wait to hear him go, oh, so you're going to open up the parts? You're going to open up the parts? And then, and then you're going to send them in and you just want to blame Walmart for just leaving it? So it's blaming Walmart's fault? It's ridiculous. It's all about the private companies who aren't picking up their stuff. Okay, so here is the problem with, with what Joe Biden is saying. It's okay, let's see it. Uh, the problem with what Joe Biden is saying is, let me read what someone else thinks. Apparently that's... Look straight at your laptop on your show. What? Why do I feel like I've walked into the world's worst Starbucks? He, you might want to take your coffee and go outside. He's always here and he never shuts up. The fact that the man is not with us. He's not with us? He presented a plan and a genuine solution to this circumstance and is asking for everybody to get on board like you would in a crisis as a president. But that means he's not with us. Uh, and by with us, he means with him and whoever the barista is working there. According to the Washington Post, no right-wing outlet. The extended hours the administration is touting represent something less than the full around-the-clock operations that are typical of the world's most advanced cargo-moving facilities. And oh, so 24-7, 24-7, that's no longer around-the-clock. We've been saying our ports in the United States are operated idiotically. We don't have the automation. We don't have 24-7. We have longshoremen unions that are being paid an absolute fortune. The Port of Long Beach, which makes up one half of the nation's chief import gateway, began a pilot program late last month of late night and pre-dawn work. An administration official said Tuesday Long Beach had already gone to 24-7 and LA would be meeting that effort. But here's the thing, that's a lie. Only one of Long Beach Port's six container terminals works 24 hours a day, one out of six. It only does so Monday through Thursday. So it's not 24-7. Yeah, that's because everybody went to the main part where there's the biggest problem, and then they're going to start opening these other pieces, and it takes time because there's a shortage of people there because they normally only work this one shift. And humans aren't robots, and fuck you. Biden said the L.A. port would be open for 60 additional hours each week, but Philip Sanfield, port spokesman, said he couldn't say how many L.A. terminals will now be in operating around the clock. Gene Soroka, executive director of the L.A. port, said on Twitter... Because they're trying to get the workers to come in from other parts of the country and make up for the shortfall. Right. Operational details are being discussed and worked out with supply chain stakeholders. Some industry executives described the administration's latest initiative, which the White House billed as nearly doubling the port's cargo handling hours, as incomplete. Matt Tra Oh, dear God. Dear God. Not, not incomplete. <laughs> And I can, the, no, dear God, you cut me to the quick, sir. And an inc, an incomplete solution <clears throat> to a, a moving problem. <clears throat> How is it even done? This is te <clears throat> chief executive of the Harbor Trucking Association, whose members service the ports, said the measure will make a big difference only if terminals abandon requirements for truckers to return a specific type of empty shipping container before collecting a full one. The problem with that, of course, is that if you don't actually have the empty shipping containers that are being returned to the port, then those ships can't leave. So they just stay there. <laughs> Except this, asshole. Uh, you got shipping container A, shipping container B, shipping container C. They're all three versions of these things. But you got trucks taking them out that can fit them, and they fuck off with those things, and then they come back with an empty one. Now, they might come back with a, leave with an A, come back with a B. But the one that comes leaves with a B might come back with an A. As long as they're getting a decent amount of them back, it doesn't fucking matter. If you're turning up the amount of volume of people driving away, you'll get back the ones that you need. 
if you're short of another one, then you make special, you know, uh, you make like a, you give people a certain pass on on bringing those back, or you go, we need more container A. Let, where can we reach out to these fees and bring them back? Like that, you just do that, and then you pay truckers an extra, you know, uh, you know, fifty dollars an hour to make sure you get the A's back. This is so fucking dumb. Jesus Christ. Do you, like... And Craig Grosscart. Senior Vice President for Global Ocean at Seco Logistics said, quote, it will accomplish zero. It's just window dressing. Indeed. The administ- yes. Uh, one of the, I, I often dress my window with uh, two more shifts of longshoremen taking off tens of thousands of tons of goods and services, uh, you know, service materials off of boats. <clears throat> but you know what? Ben's right. We should just uh, automate the whole thing. And then if a dirty nuke gets through... Who gives a shit? It's just America. Said an additional 3,500 containers each week would move through the LA port during the new nighttime hours. Thanks to promises from Walmart, FedEx, UPS, Target, Home Depot, and Samsung. The port expects to process almost 80,000 containers this week. Uh Uh-huh. In other words, this is a minute upgrade from what was already being shipped in. The administration says giant companies- On the first port being open. And they add 3,500 to this one, and then 3,500 to this one, and then 3,500 to this one. And then it takes a week or so to get the backlog going because this is an enormous backlog and adult shit. It's a second example that will spur others to follow, but longer working hours at the neighboring ports, which operated as as a single complex under dual management, will only matter if trains, trucks, and warehouses all do the same. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what Biden said, stupid. That's the whole point. This is he, what he's trying to do is basically take a comprehensive plan and a comprehensive solution that's being offered by the White House and discussed with all the different players in this and acting as if all Biden said was just focus just the ports, just let them make them work long hours. So are reluctant to show up at the Long Beach port from three to seven a.m. because they have nowhere to take containers at that hour. Nothing's open. Yes, because everything that opens up at the Long Beach port is only for California. Here's a good idea, fucko. It's 5 a.m. Get on the road. You might be in Kansas by the next morning. Basically, Joe Biden is trying to slap a tiny, tiny Band-Aid on a giant problem. Uh, No, he's trying to solve the problem the only way he actually has any impact on it whatsoever. We cannot... Uh, unless you want to circle bombers around China and make them open up their factories and stop denying them coal so they can run, make them burn more coal so that they can make plastic shit and have it shipped over here at a higher clip. In the end, it's created by macroeconomic conditions that have been generated by the Federal Reserve and his work policies and bad union contracts. His work policies? Oh, you mean the UI thing? Because truckers aren't going back. Have you been on the roads lately? Okay, first of all, just lest you think this is Joe Biden's problem. UK has a really bad trucker problem right now. They don't have enough truckers because of their immigration policy. So they kicked all the poles out, a lot of Polish drivers. So they're short on guys driving lorries, these trucks, right? right? Okay. Um, let's see. Um, let's see if lots of trucks on American roads. Burr. Mm-hmm. And I gotta find something that's I gotta be I gotta look in the news part of it because let's see. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Seeing as here like Driverless. I'm gonna. I'm trying to. There's a lot of this is on driverless trucks. Um. Hold on one second. Well, this. I mean, this should be. Um. Well, Wall Street Journal again. Again, a Murdoch company, by the way. What the infrastructure bill would help fix first. Oh yeah, I could go away. Um, transportation officials across the U.S. are gearing up for potential cash infusion from the infrastructure bill, planning to speed up repairs of century-old bridges, fix rural roads, battered by heavy trucks, and overhaul a key distribution route for hot dogs and rice cakes. What a fascinating thing. I didn't realize that was our primary diet these days, but it's not, not surprising at all. 
The Senate passed roughly $1 trillion bipartisan measure back. Okay, and that'll bounce around and then it's going to come back out. It'll be 1.5. Uh, includes $110 billion in new funding for roads, bridges, major projects over five years, as well as $66 billion for rail, $39 billion for public transit. If the infrastructure bill passes, drivers should see the ramp up next year, but probably won't notice major changes until 2023 because of the time required for design work, yada, yada, yada. Um, this is, let's see, I know there was a... Um... <laughs> This is uh, part of CNET's 2021 uh, article. And maybe it's because I drive back and forth to LA a lot. There are a shit ton of trucks on the road right now. Uh, I don't know. Like, they always are. Ask, uh, you know, my fellow road comedians uh, about your experiences with truckers over time. Truckers are the linchpin of the economy, responsible for moving 72% of all goods we consume. They're a critical link to the supply chain. Th this is every product you use travels on some kind of truck. Yeah, this is this is kind of what we're looking at. The traffic delays are da, 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 that mostly go uh, by the shipment, not hourly. There you go. Trucking routes, yada, yada. It has benefits and burdens. Da, da, da. Um, currently... Um, there are more than ever uh, because of UPS and because of Amazon and Amazon's own shipping stuff, even more trucks on the road. Half of these shipping containers are being used internally because they don't have to be returned unless you want. It's like a returning a milk bottle sometimes, depending on your contract. And failure for years to upgrade the, the port contracts and how these things work. Well, the last four years, obviously, nobody gave a fuck. It turns out that bad policy has long tails. They have long tails. Long. Wait a second. That's the end of this friggin' clip? Union contracts and failure for years to upgrade the, the port contracts and how these things work. It turns out that bad policy has long tails. They have long tails. Long. Long tails. They have long tails. They have long tails. The Ben Shapiro Show. The Ben Shapiro Show. Shapiro breaks down. And again... The title of this video could not have been, um, will you let me, click? there you go, um, absolutely garbage. It's just garbage. Could not have been uh, a more ridiculous title for what was presented here because it doesn't even seem like, seem like Shapiro wanted to bring it to sit at, at Biden's feet at all, but he needed to for the sake of just pushing a video. So... Anti-American clickbait bullshit. Um, shitting on the middle class and unions. Especially people that do backbreaking and dangerous work. Something that Ben Shapiro has never experienced in his fucking life. And if uh, you're questioning my bona fides. Uh, go the, I think it's a Coles now. But it was a Main Street when I worked there. Um... I put down the parquet flooring and uh, and and installed the uh, like the the column materials and I think it's a Coles now um, in uh, in Deerfield was the one we did mainly when I did construction in high school baling hay in Kentucky for fifty cents an hour clearing brush and and uh, cutting uh, uh, like trails for my scoutmaster when I was in. And in uh, Boy Scouts that he would later monetize. Yeah, you're right. He did buy that board that one time. And for the record, just just to put a pin on this, Ben, look at me. Look at me. Look. look this fine. Look. Where are you looking? Where are you, why are you always looking at your laptop? Are you having a Greg Kelly moment? There you go, Ben. Um. Fuck you, you child. Stop shitting on people who bust their ass for a living, who work way hard and have jobs that have not yet been fully automated because when they try to do it, they often crash or wreck the goods that they're trying to offload. And even still, we have more consumer goods coming into this country than any of the countries that you're citing. And all of them are racially homogenous, small countries with, uh, with an enormous tax shelf that you also fight at the exact same time. Nonsense.
garbage. Bullshit, Ben. And also a clickbait dodge of a real issue.